it's just the way it's so smooth, man. I love Thomas Party. As Zincheco said that, Zincheco re recognizes him as the best midfielder he's, he's ever played with. Look at this. I love this from Martinelli. I love it. Holding up the defender so Gabriel Magalhães could go back inside. Because before Gabriel Magalhães had to come from inside, the sheer confidence of this guy to be playing against in the Champions League against a big team like this. And it's like he's not even phased. He's not even phased. Look at this. Look at the challenging. Strong, aggressive in challenges. So welcome back guys to another highlights video we're going to take a look on how the game how we perform against Shakhtar Donetsk so we've got a few players that we're going to look on today and it wasn't the best of performance I'll be real with you it wasn't the best and we're going to take a look into some of the best performers on the night and we're going to start off with Gabriel Martinelli we see that he got, got because he came off the keeper to go in but that was a brilliant shot in the first place um just hitting the post but we're going to get straight into his action so we see that Martinelli actually had a very good match the game was quite open for him the, from the first minute you can see him going down the byline Whipping, whipping, getting the ball in. Nice little link up play between him and Kat. And that's something I realized. Martinelli is improving. Um, as the season goes on, he's improving with these things. Some small little, little details. Like, like, look at this ball action. Look at this. Waiting for Califlori, waiting for him to took, take away the play. And that's the shot he, he got. So, and to play with his head up. That's what I'm trying to say. He's starting to play with, with his head up. Now, once again, burning down the wing. Burning, looking, looking for the pass, looking for the play. Didn't see one, and that was a bit poor. If that pass was, was a bit better, that would have been a goal. Nice here. You see him deep in midfield and, and the defensive um, part of the game. Basically helping the defensive line there. So it's like he was everywhere, and I like that because then the play good cross there. Unlucky for Kai. That was a, that's almost a goal for Kai. Unlucky. And that should have been a goal from, from Trossard. Maybe I'm being overcritical, but that should have been a goal. And you see him there wrestling, tussling with the with the keeper putting the keeper under pressure and I love that I love the aggression from Martinelli this shot could have been a Magalhães has to come from inside to be marking that player look at this skipping through midfield this guy when he finished playing he was literally out of energy he was dead on the floor the amount of effort he put in this match Him, well Kai is Mr. Um, effort right? always putting 100% effort King, King Kai but Martinelli is, in, is growing it is so much and I appreciate what Martinelli is doing right now for the team because sometimes we only focus on the attacking um, ability of Martinelli but he's been tracking back so much in different games he's been in the, the um, um, defending a lot and this is why he's so spent his energy is so spent most of the time so he doesn't have the energy to go forward sometimes because he's tracking back to, so much and this is how we play it this is what Mikel Arteta requires of them even Saka said it in a, in a previous interview said that he would like to attack more he would like to get in the score sheet more and stay up top more but he has to drop back in the defence and it's not just about him it's what the team requires because he's a team player and Martinelli is doing the same thing so I see lots of time Martinelli bursting to get back. Now, if there's a counter attacking, if we win back, win back the ball and try to counter attack, he's not going to have the same energy because he's burst, he's burst um, coming back to defend. And now to go back up the pitch again is very, very taxing on your energy. So this is why Martinelli has been underperforming of sense, right? In, in recent times, this is one of the reasons I should say. The other reason is he hasn't, he didn't have that link up play with a good left back, I should say, or not a good left back, but a left back that is attacking minded. We see that California is attacking minded last season at the end of last season he didn't have that right if you remember sometimes Kivio was playing there so he didn't have a, a player like like um Calafro or Timber on that side right Zinchenko sometimes but Zinchenko invert too, too much Zinchenko doesn't really go down the byline to help him Zinchenko inverts a lot so he still didn't have much help from Zinchenko but with Calafro I think we's go we're gonna get the better of him even if it's Timber Timber plays the same way Timber knows how to invert he knows how to go down the byline he does both equally so then that would help Martinelli going on so big up to Gabriel Martinelli on a superb performance even though the team didn't play well Thomas Party played well Gabriel uh, um, um, Gabriel uh, Martinelli played well and a few other players played well um, so now we're getting into Thomas Partey as I said Thomas Partey had a brilliant display and as soon as the match started I said I already set up I made a post on Twitter said listen he's already the man of the match for me Thomas Partey is already the man of the match the way he dictates the midfield he's just it's like he's the lone midfielder so because most of the time look where Declan Rice is Declan Rice is on the attack most of the times when Thomas Partey is on the ball Declan Rice most of the time where's Declan Rice he's in attack Calafro most of the time is with Partey inverting him with Partey look you see Calafro right beside him Declan Rice is eye up the pitch on the number eight left hand side and Thomas look at these little play look at one two brilliant on the ball driving so I'm saying Thomas Partey right now is world-class performances. Every performance I've seen since a lot since a, after the first 
first two performances of the season. After that, every single match Thomas Partey plays in is a world class performance. I guarantee you this. This guy, he, he, age is nothing but a number to him. His ability is timeless. Thomas Partey's look at this. The space he occupies, getting in there, unlucky, almost got a, a nutmeg and get the ball on the other side. Thomas Partey, man, I, I really enjoyed this match with Thomas Partey. And the one, uh, the last match as well in the Premier League, some um, against Bournemouth, like literally, Thomas Partey right now is the best player for Arsenal in, in most matches. It's not William Saliba anymore. It's Gabriel Magalhães and Thomas Partey in midfield. These are, and Kai Havertz in attacking. These are the three Im most important players for us in, in each and every department. And listen, it, we have to appreciate that because before the season start, many fans were saying that we need to get rid of him, sell him to Saudi Arabia, collect some, some fee for him. But look at this play, just driving. We, look at the speed that everyone is criticizing that he, he lost his speed. Not everyone, but most fans are criticizing that he lost his speed. Look at the speed. Brilliant pass again. It's just the way he's so smooth, man. I love Thomas Partey. As Zinchenko said that, Zinchenko recognizes him as the best midfielder he's ever played with. And remember, Zinchenko plays with Reggie. He plays with Fernandino. He plays with some world-class midfielder. For Zinchenko to say this about Thomas Partey, we have to look into why. This guy can play good in defense. He can play good in attack. He's a very good passer of the ball. He's a very good dribbler. He's got everything in his repertoire. And this, we need to start giving Thomas Partey his credit. He, re he really deserves this credit that uh, I'm giving him right now. Especially for the past few matches, right? As I said... The two matches, the first two matches of the season, it was a bit poor. It was shaky. It was getting back into match match fitness. But after that, Thomas Partey for me is world class. Since then, he's been world class. And as I said, the last match against Bournemouth, it's unfortunate that he was on the losing team because of his ability, how good he is. Now, because California got injured, but he done very well coming on late in the match um, with um, um, the, the opposition like growing in confidence and attacking more. He's, he, he done well. Look at this. Demanding the ball in areas like this. Demanding the ball from, from the experienced players. I love this about him. The confidence on this guy. The sheer confidence of this guy to be playing against in the Champions League against a big team like this. And it's like he's not even phased. He's not even phased. Look at this. Look at the challenging. Strong, aggressive in challenges. No nonsense. Look at this. Shielding the ball. Getting his body between the ball and the man. Brilliant, brilliant play. Myers Lewis Skelly, remember this name. I'm telling you, this guy, Iman Waneri, they've got they're fearless. They're fearless. I love the way they play. Look at this. Look at this. Little one, two in the middle of the pitch. And he's, he's dictating the play as eight, 17 years old. Dictating the play in a big team like Arsenal against a big team like this. In the Champions League. Big event. Nah, man. Nah, man. This, this, I love this. So we see um, young players like with big personalities coming from the last Real Madrid, Barcelona of one. We see Lamau. We see we see this for big teams, and now we're seeing it for Arsenal. The last one we can remember is Jack Wilshere. That's on this level. I believe Miles Lewis Kelly and Ethan O'Neill level is so high that from Jack Wilshere and Saka, there's I can't remember anyone that came from the academy with this personality, with this level of confidence and aggression and personality like. Not phase. You remember Jack Wilshere in the Champions League against Barcelona? This is when our team wasn't as great as it is right now. Our team was so fragile. And Jack Wilshere literally ran the midfield against Xavi, Iniesta and Busquet. Jack Wilshere dominated midfield. Playing against with these legend. This is what Awaneri and Skelly reminds me of. The fearlessness in them. And I saw a report that Jack Wilshere is leaving. And... It might be a negative for Dalman. I heard um, a report came on that Dalman is disappointed. And I don't want to see that. I can't, we can't afford to lose any more youngsters of this caliber, of this kind of quality. And Dalman is the next one in line, I would say. That's after Skelly and Waneri. Is Dalman coming through because we got um, we lost Chido and we can't be losing Dalman. So I don't know what Arsenal need to do, but we need to get Dalman feeling happy, feeling sweet because I heard a report saying that he's a bit disappointed because we could have done more to keep Jack Wilshere. Now, it could be a rumour. It's, it's possibly a rumour, but I, I don't know. But my point is that we need to do everything we can to keep quality players like these because quite players like these with this confidence, with this ability, with this personality, only the big teams produce them. We see Chelsea producing lots of young talents over the years. And not one of them, well, there's a few, well, one and two. But the, the amount of money Chelsea spend on Academy, there should be more than what they have right now. And you see with us, we, there's so much coming through right now with us. And we're improving our Academy. Now we need to find ways to keep our top talents. We kept two in Waneri and Skelly. We need to keep Dalman. We can't let Dalman slip through our fingers like Chido. We can't. 
So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Help me on my journey to 10,000 subs. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Goodbye.